in the peaceful streets of historic Chester, England. A tale of sheer horror and unfathomable wickedness unfolded, casting a dark cloud that stretched far beyond the borders of this community. This is the true story of Lucy Letby, a nurse whose chilling actions plunged an entire town into an abyss of fear. On July 3, 2018, Lucy Letby, a trusted nurse in the world of healthcare, stood accused of crimes so unbelievable and so tragic that they would forever brand her as the baby serial killer. Lucy was accused of murder of seven innocent newborns and the calculated attempts on the lives of six more innocent babies. As news of her arrest spread like wildfire, the tight-knit community of Chester was left in a state of complete shock. People couldn't understand how such terrible things could happen within a place that is supposed to provide healing and care. Welcome back to True Crime Expresso, the portal through which we journey deep into the underbelly of society, where solved and unsolved crimes intertwine with haunting mysteries from every corner of the globe. Join us as we will peel back the layers of Lucy Letby's shocking crimes. We will explain how Lucy took the tragic lives of many innocent babies, how she avoided the authorities, and the disturbing confession notes found in her home. Let's dive into the case. Lucy Letby was born on January 4, 1990, in Hereford, England. Her parents were John Letby and Susan Letby. Lucy spent her formative years in Hereford and attended Aylstone School and Hereford Sixth Form College. Lucy's passion for nursing, particularly in the care of newborns, was evident from a young age. Her journey in this field led her to the University of Chester, where she not only pursued her nursing education, but also worked as a student nurse. She gained valuable experience through placements at Liverpool Women's Hospital and the Countess of Chester Hospital. Lucy's graduation in September 2011 marked a significant achievement as she became the first in her family to attend and complete university. In 2012, Lucy Leppi started her professional nursing trek at the neonatal unit of County of Chester Hospital. In 2013, in a staff biography, she stated that as a nurse, her responsibility was to provide for the requirements of a diverse group of infants. She also said that she found happiness in seeing their improvement and in assisting their family. Back in 2015, amid the alarming height of infant mortality rates, Lucy Leppi was at the forefront embedded in the bustling universe of the neonatal ward, tirelessly tending to those tiny lives teetering on the brink. In her unique role as the designated nurse for a host of infants, the depths of her dedication surfaced. Lucy's resolve extended beyond the daily grind. She was an integral player in an ambitious campaign to amass three million pounds over a span of three years. The objective? To enhance the neonatal unit at the hospital, a haven where families could claim more room and privacy while their little babies' lives received the necessary care. However, underneath this laudable exterior, a sinister secret was foaming within her mind, a secret that surpasses imagination, rising into a realm of disconcerting darkness. In June 2015, there was an informal review conducted by a consultant and a lead neonatologist at the Countess of Chester Hospital, and it uncovered some concerning details. Four unexplained collapses occurred in the neonatal unit, and tragically, three of these cases resulted in deaths within the same month. What raised eyebrows was the fact that a nurse named Lucy Letby had been on duty during each of these incidents. The hospital's consultants promptly reported these deaths to the hospital's committee that dealt with serious incidents. However, the committee labeled these cases as medication errors rather than recognizing them as serious incidents involving unexpected deaths. This misclassification hindered any immediate investigation from taking place. Later in October 2015, a ward manager conducted an independent review and noticed a significant commonality. Nurse Lucy was consistently present during these incidents. These findings were brought to the attention of the lead neonatologist. Moreover, additional concerns were voiced by the unit's consultant in the same month. Between June 2015 and June 2016, reports from Embrace UK, an organization focused on maternal and infant health audits in the UK, revealed a concerning situation. The neonatal death rate during this period was found to be at least 10% higher than expected. Notably, the number of neonatal deaths in 2015 was doubled compared to the previous year. 
This raised serious concerns and demanded further investigation. It wasn't until February 2016 that a more in-depth review was conducted by the neonatologist and other consultants. This review investigated not only the collapses, but also five unexplained deaths within the unit. Their inquiry found a common factor. Once again, the presence of Nurse Lucy. The lead neonatologist communicated these findings to the hospital's medical director, which led to a meeting in May 2016. However, the hospital's executive team dismissed the evidence as coincidental and failed to take substantial action. In the same month, a scheduled visit by the Care Quality Commission, CQC, revealed some challenges regarding voicing concerns with upper management. Strikingly, they were not made privy to the climbing mortality rates. The CQC's report pointed out issues like staffing shortages and lack of diversity in skill sets within the unit. That said, they didn't overlook the overall positive environment of the hospital, highlighting well-supported staff who felt confident raising concerns. Come June 2016, a difficult choice lay ahead for the top brass of the hospital. With seven unnerving occurrences of unexpected deaths within their unit, the decision of whether to involve law enforcement hung heavily in the balance. This marked a new terrain for them, as they had not contemplated this before. Despite the brewing suspicions around Lucy, they felt the weight of the evidence was insufficient. A concern haunted them, a paranoia that potential police involvement might mar the hospital's reputation. In lieu of involving the police, the medical director and the chief executive of the hospital dispatched for an independent assessment by the Royal College of Pediatrics and Child Health, or the RCPCH. Concurrently, they opted for scaling back some of the unit services and rerouting certain cases to other hospitals. However, the review conducted by the RCPCH had a limited scope. It focused on the general service and did not investigate Lucy's actions or the deaths directly. When the RCPCH reported its findings in October 2016, they couldn't pinpoint a definitive explanation for the increased mortality rate but they did identify problems with staffing and senior cover. Their report recommended a detailed case review of each death. A consultant neonatologist from Great Ormond Street Hospital, Jane Hodden, was enlisted to conduct these case reviews. Due to time constraints, Hodden provided a summary rather than a comprehensive review. She pinpointed four instances where a close examination of the situation and staff could yield forensic insights. During these investigations, Lucy was shifted from a neonatal unit to another unit. Then, in September 2016, Lucy lodged a formal complaint about her reassignment from clinical duties. In January 2017, the board upheld her grievance, finding that her removal had been orchestrated by consultants without solid evidence. They supported her return to the neonatal unit and offered her a position at Alder Hay Children's Hospital, along with opportunities for advanced practice or pursuing a master's degree. The medical director emphasized it was an intention to protect Lucy from any wrong allegations. In March 2017, as concerns grew, the consultants requested that the hospital administration should contact the police. They did so on the advice of the regional neonatal lead, who recommended that more investigation was required. A meeting with Cheshire Constabulary took place in late April just before Nurse Lucy was scheduled to return to work. The hospital publicly announced the police involvement in May 2017, stating the aim was to rule out any unnatural causes of death. The subsequent police investigation was referred to as Operation Hummingbird. In a shocking turn of events, on July 3, 2018, Lucy Letby found herself under the custody of the police. The accusations levied against her were horrifying it was believed that she had played a sinister role in eight infant deaths and six instances of near-fatal harm to babies. All the threads of suspicion led back to the Countess of Chester Hospital, the institution where Lucy had been rendering her services. This resulted in an extensive search of her home in Chester initiated following her arrest. But the inquiry didn't stop there. Investigators expanded their focus to include the Liverpool Women's Hospital another establishment where Lucy had worked. Although they initially found no evidence of harm inflicted upon infants in this facility, they maintained their diligence, choosing to scrutinize her entire career. Among the discoveries was a chilling green post-it note 
found inside a 2016 diary bearing what seemed to be a stark confession. I am evil. I did this. On the same note, Letby had written, I killed them on purpose because I'm not good enough. Her defense contended that this note was written by an anguished woman in despair, burdened by the connection to the collapses and deaths of the infants. However, this was not the sole note that shed light on Letby's state of mind prior to her arrest. Another note with similar small writing covering every available space contained haunting phrases such as, I'm sorry that you couldn't have a chance at life, and help, both written in capital letters. In yet another note, she expressed, I don't want to do this anymore. During the search, officers also discovered around 257 confidential hospital documents concealed in bags within Letby's bedroom. These documents included handover and resuscitation sheets, as well as blood gas readings, some of which were linked to the infants she had been accused of harming or killing. Letby consistently asserted on the witness stand that her actions were driven by a penchant for collecting paper or simply forgetting to remove the documents from her uniform before returning home. The investigation did not stop there, as it expanded to encompass another hospital where Lucy had worked, named Liverpool Women's Hospital. While no immediate evidence of infant harm was found during the initial stages of the inquiry, authorities continued to scrutinize her entire professional career. On July 6, 2018, Lucy was granted bail while the police continued their search for more information. However, she faced subsequent arrests on June 10, 2019 and again on November 10, 2020. On November 11, 2020, she was officially charged with eight counts of murder and 10 accounts of attempted harm to infants, leading to her detention in police custody. Throughout the legal proceedings, Lucy vehemently denied all charges, asserting that the infants had died due to inadequate hospital cleanliness and a lack of staffing to care for them. On March 13, 2020, her nursing license was temporarily suspended pending further investigation. The trial of Lucy commenced at Manchester Crown Court on October 10, 2022, under the jurisdiction of Mr. Justice Goss. The proceedings were scheduled to last about six months. Lucy faced seven counts of murder and 15 counts of attempted murder relating to 10 babies. Throughout the trial, Lucy maintained her innocence, pleading not guilty to all charges. The families of the victims and Lucy's parents were also present during the trial. The children at the center of the charges were identified as Child A to Child Q, with their real names kept confidential. The veil of secrecy extended to the identities of 17 babies and nine colleagues who provided testimony. The presiding judge, Mrs. Justice Stain, decreed two years before the trial that the living children would remain anonymous until they reached the age of 18. The parents' wish for occupation-related details to be safeguarded was mostly upheld, except for one parent who had medical expertise. The judge considered the importance of the colleagues' testimonies and granted them anonymity. During the trial, the prosecution painted Lucy as a constant malevolent presence within the hospital's neonatal unit. Shockingly, it was alleged that Lucy had even searched for parents of certain babies on social media, including the parents of one of the victims, she had also sent a sympathy card to one family. The prosecutor claimed that Lucy allegedly injected air into the veins of two victims, subjecting certain children to forceful milk feeding and even used insulin to kill others. Her victims included two identical triplet brothers who were slain within 24 hours of each other, a baby weighing less than one kilogram who was fatally injected with air, and a 10-week premature girl who was murdered on the fourth attempt. The defense countered that Lucy was a committed nurse operating within a flawed system. They said that the prosecution's argument was based on the idea that Lucy intentionally caused harm. Lucy's defense lawyer said that her being present during certain events was just a matter of chance. They also argued that the hospital's overall lack of proper care couldn't be blamed entirely on Lucy. Defense also presented text messages which were sent from Lucy to her friends. These messages were expressing her sorrow over the baby's death and the agony felt by grieving parents. During the trial, a pediatrician from the hospital testified that he and other clinicians had previously raised concerns about Lucy, but hospital authorities discouraged them from speaking out. Another doctor recounted a haunting statement by Lucy regarding a premature baby just an hour before the child's death. He's not leaving here alive, is he? 
During the trial's fourth day, a pivotal moment unfolded as the prosecution introduced a crucial piece of evidence, the handwritten note penned by Lucy herself. In the note, she openly confessed her guilt and said, I don't deserve to live. I killed them on purpose because I'm not good enough to care for them. The note also stated, I am a horrible, evil person. I am evil. I did this. The defense argued that this note was a manifestation of despair, written during a time when Lucy was grappling with employment issues and a grievance procedure with the NHS Trust. Several other notes from Lucy were also shown, expressing frustration at not being allowed back on the neonatal unit. In May 2023, Lucy herself took the stand in the court. She denied malicious intent, asserting that she felt incompetent but never meant to cause harm. She explained the I am evil note as a reflection of her self-doubt and the weight of the accusations. Lucy disclosed that the allegations had severely affected her mental health, causing isolation from her friends on the unit and a significant decline in self-confidence. During her testimony, she broke down in tears, revealing the emotional toll this trial had taken on her. On August 8, 2023, Lucy was found guilty of seven counts of murdering infants between 2015 and 2016. Her methods included injecting air, overfeeding, insulin poisoning, and medical tool assaults. She was also considered as the most prolific child serial killer in modern British history. Apart from the murders, she was found guilty of attempting to murder six other babies during the same period. She was cleared of two attempted murder charges. Finally, on August 21st, 2023, Goss, the judge at Manchester Crown Court, handed down a severe verdict. The 33-year-old Lucy Letby was given a life sentence with no chance of parole, the harshest penalty in English law. This marked only the fourth time in UK history that a woman received such a sentence. Goss described Lucy's actions as a heartless and calculated campaign of child murder, especially cruel considering the victim's vulnerability. He criticized her lack of remorse and mentioned the possibility of changing the law to ensure defendants attend their sentencing since Lucy did not attend the sentencing. In the end, the case of Lucy Letby serves as a chilling reminder of how darkness can hide in seemingly safe places, like a neonatal unit. It urges us to stay watchful, especially in protecting our most vulnerable. This case's impact reaches beyond Lucy's immediate circle leaving a lasting impression on the entire community. The question still lingers, why did Lucy do it? Let us know your thoughts down below.